All right, so now we're going to move on to the segment of the podcast called Buy, Rent, Burn. And this is where each of us present one game. Uh, we each have a pick, and we decide which of those three games, after giving them a playthrough, we would buy, rent, or burn. Uh, this week's selections, uh, Andy has brought Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue for the Game Boy. Uh, this was a Konami title, and it was released in 1993. Justin has gone with Lemmings for the Super Nintendo, published by Sunsoft and released in 1992. And uh, myself, I've gone with Time Slip, Super Nintendo game, uh, published by Victo Kai, and was released in 1993. Quite the selection this week, guys. Um, Andy, why don't you uh, tell us about your fantastic entry? Sure. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 for the Game Boy is... Kind of a departure from a lot of the other uh, beat 'em ups that the Turtles kind of stayed in. Uh, this is more of a Metroidvania game, um, which was kind of interesting for that time, '93. So uh, Turtles with a Metroidvania game is is kind of interesting because you still have the beat 'em up, or not the beat 'em up, but more like a character action attacking different guys, but also have a map. And the whole plot of the game is three of the turtles follow a lead to, uh, I think it's Save April. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Michelangelo got left behind and finds out that the other three turtles are trapped. So he has to go out and uh, save the other three turtles. And that's kind of the gimmick in how the Metroidvania works in this game, where once you wreck... Uh, rescue one of the turtles obviously they have a an ability that gets you somewhere farther on the map that you couldn't get to before the main reason i picked this game is to troll ryan because uh, i wanted him to read tmnt3 and be excited <laughs> because the third one is my favorite turtles game um on the nes and i love it right right this is um, not that game though <laughs> not, not even in the close. slightest nope. no so it worked it worked as planned. Yes, I did get immediately excited and then quickly disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I think it's a kind of a cool take on it on on a turtles game. I wish they would have done a couple things to maybe make the map traversal a little bit easier and kind of more uh, pointed to where you need to go. Yeah, that just was not clear, and that map was not helping you at all. Right. It's it basically. You constantly had to check your map, and then I constantly kept losing my place in the map, kind of like, uh, did I go here? Did I go <clears> there? <throat> There's no, like, yeah. door markers either. It's just blocks. It looks like Tetris blocks stacked on top of each other. And they repeated the same level design and background elements, so, like, nothing distinguished one corridor from the next or one ladder from another. Yep, exactly. Yep. And occasionally you would get a new enemy that would appear only in certain areas, so then you kind of knew... But even then, that wasn't always true, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is more my type of game than the actual beat-em-ups were. I mean, be the, the beat-em-ups are fun, but they're only fun for 15 minutes for me. Whereas this, I think if I was a kid back in 93 and, you know, better systems weren't out, Super Metroid wasn't out yet, um, I probably would have been into this quite a bit i would actually probably put my time into it and learn the map and and actually you know memorize that stuff but nowadays there's it's kind of like shameful <laughs> yeah no i'm absolutely kind of expected from you. i would have i probably would have played the hell out of that as a kid um and, and would have figured it all out and like the visuals are good the, the audio is good the, the controls are tight everything's good about it it just becomes this horrible like schlag as you're trying to progress and like decipher that map which as a kid with a higher attention span and more time um i think i've become more adds i'm an adult i just i quickly gave up on it i didn't even rescue another turtle i was like leo donnie and raff were just screwed because <laughs> michelangelo is not getting there um it just i mean he's still uh, getting yeah. his pizza he's fine <laughs> no, i did like the life system too because like you could store pizza, so if you... It was kind of like the fairy bottle in Legends of Zelda, but instead of a fairy resuscitating you, it was just the box of pizza you found in a yep. sewer, which was nice. Yep. Sewer pizza, magical sewer pizza. Which is funny, because it does the opposite for me in real life. But. 
question. I feel like the the game had a lot of potential. Like the idea behind it was fun, but the gameplay just I couldn't do it. I, I think I went into it expecting it was going to be like the NES version, though, and that's where it went wrong. <laughs> it's at least better than the earlier Game Boy entries, where you're like it's just like walk right, smash attack button. Like those were so bad in like the gameplay department that this was at least improved upon in every single way except the fact that the map they gave you to traverse everything was abysmal. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, and I wish I remembered how Metroid 2 does it, if they actually like colored off the map yeah, as did. it went. It did? It did, okay. yep. And I think Metroid 2 had to have been earlier than this. <clears throat> yeah, well, and Metroid 2 um, does a very good job level design-wise of like segmenting up backgrounds, enemies, music changes... So it's like, even without the map, it's very easy to tell which section you're in. Sure. Uh, it's a very clear distinction and feel, uh, but that's something Metroid does well as a whole, I think. Yep. And yeah, that I think had they done, <clears throat> had they tried to lean on that aspect a little bit more in designing the level, um, it probably would have been fine with the crappy map because you could have sort of pieced it together. I mean, honestly, I felt like even as a kid, this would have been something where I had to like draw something on a sheet of paper. Oh, absolutely. You know, everybody did it. You know, you'd mark stuff down, um, and I would have been drawing the map room by room, I guarantee. Yep. I mean, just the biggest sin, I think, was like not showing which segments are connected to each other. Right. Because um, I would constantly be like, okay, I need to get to the hallway or the block above me in, on the map, but I had no way to know which side of the entrance to that, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, like, some of those transitions where, like, it, I played for about 20 minutes before I realized that, like, the black spot on the side was a, something I could jump through. Like, I didn't know it was a doorway for the longest time. Yeah. It was dumb. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Justin, tell me about Lemmings. <laughs> well, that's, I guess, puzzle platformer. Um, you know... I used to play it quite a bit on the PC, and I was expecting it to be, you know, somewhat similar. Gameplay and stuff is all there, same as PC, it's just you don't have the mouse and the ease, I guess, to select the people that you're going to have do a f- function, but overall, I don't know how I feel about this version. <laughs> I'm not going to play it again. <laughs> um, but... You know, it's it's one of those games that I always found was fun playing on PC, just the different levels, and some of the levels actually got to be pretty challenging. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't work well on Super, I guess. Yeah, I feel the same way about how this is a... I think this is still a great PC game, but as soon as you put a game on Super Nintendo where you're moving a cursor around with a D-pad, I think you instantly lose points. Yeah. And and that's just a sacrifice of the console itself, but overall it's still, I think, a pretty good puzzle game. I think it's pretty one-dimensional, though. Once you figure out the one thing, you uh, pretty much nailed it. Um, And then the other thing is, like, sitting there waiting for it to play out is (laughs) something that is... (laughs) Excruciating. Yeah, nowadays, yeah. I don't know how it, how it was back then, but now it it just feels like okay. I figured uh, like I I did the puzzle. Why am I being punished? You know. Yeah. Why is there no speed up? There is on the bottom. You can speed up. It's just or not speed up, but speed the drop. Yeah, but that still isn't. They still walk that, slow as shit. They have no yeah. hustle. Like it, it seems like on PC, like it sped them up walking too, but maybe it didn't. I don't know. Well, on PC, like too, you had better graphical fidelity, like. PC monitors at the time were better than CRTs, um, and like, <clears throat> I don't know, I just feel like the game looked a whole lot better on PC, but yeah, I mean, this is a game that everyone has played at some point in their life, at least our generations, and I really liked it, and I played it all the time on my buddy's PC, he had the game, we would go through it, and I remember liking it and the puzzle solving elements, but man, was going back to this brutal. I mean, it was just a snooze fest. I, I could not stand the waiting around like you you know andy was saying it's just you you solve the puzzle and then you have to wait for 99 of those blue little shits to walk over to the door <laughs> and it's just not fun 
I did always enjoy though when you're not quite sure if they're gonna die from the fall, so you just let them go, and then it's too late, so you just watch them all die. Yeah, I will say I didn't get too far into it this time, but I do remember like playing that sometimes once you get farther in the game, there's a lot going on, and you're kind of doing you're juggling a few things at the same time. Yeah. So there's definitely there's more uh, manic gameplay to it, which is fun for a puzzle game. Yeah, I would assume that it would get extremely challenging, though, further on. Like, I, I think I did maybe five levels or so on this. I just couldn't do any more on this version. But once it got further along, I would assume that it would be very chaotic because you're trying to move the cursor and down and select. Well, I suppose you could R1. And... I'm assuming it would be pretty much impossible. I mean, it wouldn't be, it'd be a real chore with those slow controls on the Super Nintendo yeah. and the mouse. I can't imagine it'd be fun. Yeah, I had, I had so much trouble trying to get the front one when you had to stop them. Oh yeah, if they ever they got near like you could pick it out on PC where you could still get the front one even though if they're like right next to each other. Yeah, this one. No, I always let a handful go by before the stop guy would show up. I don't know. Wait, the pixel fidelity just wasn't there. Yeah. 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 But at least it gave you the option to nuke them all. Which made me <laughs> happy. Exploding lemmings. Probably the only redeeming quality of this port. Did you know they made a PSP game of lemmings? Seriously? Yeah, they made them that late. Gosh. I'm not sure if it's the same exact gameplay, but... Well, they got a lemmings too, I think, for Super as well. Yep, yep, they do. Really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's That's pretty ridiculous. expensive, if I remember right, too. I'm gonna check. I'm curious now. Well, on Lemmings, it was one of those games that it was literally ported to everything back in the day. I think the only game that might have gotten ported to more systems was Zoop. <laughs> which was another puzzle game that was awful. I only own three copies of that one, though. Only three? Yep, just three. <laughs> so yeah, Lemmings okay. 2 is... 20 like bucks, it's not twenty dollars. Yeah, completed 75, though. That's Well, although that's five sales a year, but yeah. I don't know. Probably not worth it. And it is worth pointing out that this... I think Lemmings did work with the Super Nintendo Mario Paint mouse, right? Oh, yeah. I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. Which I yeah, was I'm not sure if test, it does. But yeah. That's a... Yeah, I, I think it did. A good thing to point out. Which is interesting. It probably doesn't make the game any better. It probably makes it worse, if I had to guess. But... Yeah. It's a knows. thing. I don't know. I think... I mean, that cursor is the one thing that holds that game back the most, for sure. Absolutely. Just, you know, that they couldn't figure out a way to do that, you know, in a more natural way. It's funny that they didn't just, you know, given that platformers were so popular at that time, it's funny they didn't just turn it in like a really crappy, like, platforming game, like where you just controlled all lemming. You know, it would have been an easy, like, cash grab, kids would have bought it. Yeah, that's true. Could have been a mascot, mascot type game instead of, you know, the game that it was on PC. Yeah, we could have had Lemmings Mania now. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Hopefully somebody's listening to this and they figure out a way to hack and do a sprite swap. I'm going to go on the record that Lemmings and Hedgehogs should stay separate, so... <laughs> Aren't they, like, virtually the same animal in real life? <laughs> pretty damn close. I don't know. It's funny. So, we'll talk about Time Slip a little bit. My my pick. Um, time Slip, I... I I think fairly accurately I've always just kind of called, since I've played it, uh, I call it the Poor Man's Contra, which I think is exactly the game that it's trying to be, gameplay-wise. Um, <clears throat> it's got worse graphics, uh, worse controls, but as far as gameplay goes, it's a lot of the same like move forward and shoot that you'd see in a Contra game. I don't think the art style is very good. I think it's kind of more cartoony, and it does... It, it doesn't have like the clearest power up system. Like I don't I don't know what you guys thought about that, but it's just kind of weird that you'll like randomly progress through a level, and for some reason there's four crates dropped in a row that you just like lay down and shoot, and all of a sudden you've got all these weapon power ups. There's like no excitement to it. Like that was like the best part of Contra was like juggling the power up or like shooting an enemy and getting that shotgun you've been waiting for. Especially when it's like floating in the air too, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But in time slip, they're like, nope, clear the screen, lay on your belly prone, yeah. and just hold the trigger. Like, super exciting. And then get attacked anyways. Right. Well, and that's the yeah, It's got horrendous, like, enemy spawning. Like, stuff just keeps spawning and spawning. 
<laughs> and the best part is like that opening sequence is all just very you're attacking people you know it's it's like a military action platformer shooter kind of and then you progress in the second stage and all of a sudden like you're in the pits of hell and there's like headless freaks attacking you and floating skulls it just makes no sense there's no continuity to that game at all and then like we ta- like we had touched on um before the podcast was um just the art style altogether is just bonkers. Like, there's a power-up you get on the second stage that's a shield. But the way they blended that into the game is awful. It's just literally a bright, like, fluorescent-colored solid triangle that, like, floats behind your character. And it's got to be, like, one of the most jarring things I've ever seen in a game. It's just... You have to see it to really appreciate how bad that is and out of place um, as a, as a power-up in that game. And when it explodes, too, it just, like, shatters and... Goes everywhere. <laughs> yep. And then I think, like, when you reach that second boss, too, it's just like they clearly tried to copy the, the formula for Contra, where it's just like one big room with like a boss, like, attacking at you from the background. And I mean, it is a blatant ripoff. Um, and just not that great. I can't say I really enjoyed this game all that much. Um, <laughs> the The spawning of the enemies really killed it for me, where. I could get the kind of the gist that they were going for Contra, but Contra is a lot of like run, stop, shoot quickly, where this was run, stop, and shoot for, you know, 10 seconds straight, move five steps, and then shoot down five more guys that are spawning right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was really egregious for <laughs> the amount of enemies that they were spawning there. Um, and yeah, the. The bullets were kind of cool where you could kind of earn the... It seemed like you were earning the spread shot through levels. I, I never really did quite figure that out, how you gain those levels. It was, do you know if it was like a pickup they were, you were getting? Yeah, I think it was that pickup where it's it looks like a giant like D battery. I think that's the one that increases your rate of fire okay. and upgrades it. Sure. Sure. Um, the bosses took... The, at least the first boss and the second boss, they took a lot of bullets. Uh, the game is kind of uh, spongy that way for bullets, um, and the art style. Yeah, like that's a that's a weird thing that they had going on there, where like you're basically on those that first level, and then like you said, you're you're just in this cave. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's completely like out of nowhere almost. Yeah. But when we are on the bosses too, like if you do die on the boss, you come back and you don't have any of the power ups, and it just takes so much longer than two on the boss because you can't do nearly the the fire rate or the the spread on the shot. Yeah, it's just brutal. Does it, like, did you guys notice? Like I couldn't figure it out, like where it was listed. But does it have a health bar for your character? Like I never knew when I was gonna die and when I wasn't. You know, what was that blue bar on the top? I don't know if that was your health or not. Okay. Wasn't there one on the right side? That was like with the blocks. Yeah. So the block. Okay, because I like the Each only hit. time I ever paid attention to it was like when I was fighting um, bosses, and it went down. So I just assumed it was like their health meter, but sure. must must have been mine. I think it's each each hit took one of those boxes. Okay. I'm not sure what that blue bar was though. I think that might have been rate of fire, like how powered up you were. That could be with that, but well, if you have to it. like try and figure that out after playing the game. It's probably a problem. <laughs> yeah. I see that move, but I didn't know what made it move. Like while I was playing, yeah. Or you're probably dist- distracted by like the endless onslaught of like random hordes <laughs> of enemies charging at you. Well, it's it kind of nice because you can just stand there and hold the button. You don't have to pay attention because you're hitting them. Yeah, and so you just you know. Oh well, yeah, because everything's like auto like turbo fire. I mean, there's no. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. That part's kind of cool. I do like that where you're just like spitting bullets out like crazy. Uh, I just wish the enemies didn't spit out at the same rate as well. Right. So I think it's probably time to do our picks. Um, I-, I will say before we even get into picks that this is the first iteration of Byron Burn where I genuinely dislike every single game that we've. There's not a redeeming quality that I would latch on to for any of these. But, um, yeah, Andy, why don't we start back with you and, and get your, your selection in here. Yeah, I'm, I, it's the first one where I'm trying to decide which one of these is worthy enough the most to burn. 
because <laughs> they all kind of are. Because um, if given the choice, you'd burn them all. <laughs> right. Uh, against competition of some of our other games, I think these were definitely in the last place on a lot of them. Um, mm-hmm. For my buy, I'm going to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, the one game that I brought, uh, just because I think the idea is really cool. And in 93, I'm surprised that they actually sat down and said, what if we did, you know, a Metroid game? Um, instead of just constantly putting out the same beat up game that they had been doing to wild success. So I, I applaud them to kind of trying something different. I, I kind of wonder if this is a different game that they just put different sprites in. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I think if I was younger and there wasn't more advanced stuff, I would have really enjoyed this game. Uh, it definitely is my type of game, but it just doesn't have the same type of features that are kind of expected nowadays. So, uh, there is some downside to it. Um, uh, for my rent, I'm going to pick lemmings because I do, (laughs) I do like lemmings, the game itself. Uh, it's just hindered, uh, on the super Nintendo with the mouse, like we talked or lack of mouse, like we talked about. Uh, and my burn is going to be time slip. I just did not enjoy that game. <laughs> uh, I could definitely see it, it's, it's, it's got the Contra wannabe for sure. It, I just don't see the, uh, the, the depth to it as far as, uh, just constantly shooting bullets to the point of just standing there and not doing anything really. So for being a wild action action game like con- trying to be like Contra, I thought there was a lot of lack of uh, action in it actually. So that's going to be my burn. Lack of action in it actually, I like that. Yep. <laughs> Generic <laughs> podcast catchphrase. <laughs> All, right. All right, not not a bad order. How about you, Justin? Well, with some of the games that we've had in the past, having to go with. These three is just brutal. Yeah, we all universally picked equally crap games. Like, it's kind of amazing. Like, we've had weeks where they could have all been possibly bought. <laughs> and then we get to this. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go... My buy is going to be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I am terrible at it. But I think it's got the most um, potential, I guess, to be enjoyable. <laughs> it's got a decent story behind it and stuff, and just the gameplay is just bad. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's going to be my buy. Um, I am going to go for my rent. will be Lemmings. <sighs> um, the controls are rough. <laughs> On the super, but the gameplay is still there, um, and just because of what that game is, I guess that's gonna be my rent. Um, I, yeah, time slip will be my burn. Um, I'm not good at this game either. This is probably the game that I've spent the most time playing, and I am not good at it. Um, as far as when you get to the stages where you have to, like, climb the wall and dodge those archers or whatever, and the cannons and stuff. But, yeah, that's going to be my burn. I'm not a fan of that one. Those are both jerks. I can hear your heart breaking. <laughs> well, mostly just from Justin, because he's torched my biohazard battle and now my time slip. Not that they're... <laughs> A fair comparison, but <laughs> <clears throat> these are all bad games, though. So I, it's like, where, where do you list them? So, um, my list, I would, I would buy Time Slip. Um, I've progressed further in it in the past than I have um, for this iteration. I actually liked it a lot more uh, when I played it initially a couple of years ago when I bought it for the first time or picked up the cart. Um, it reminds me a lot of another game that people say is an awful game, which is that, I, I don't even know the name of it, but there's a second um, Jurassic Park game that was produced by Ocean on the Super Nintendo that everybody says is just terrible. 
but it plays a whole lot like this game, and I used to play the hell out of that, and I actually really like it. Um, so I think like I could sit down and, even though it's a terrible game, like find myself pushing to progress further through it. So I'm going to go with Time Slip for my buy. Um, I would rent TMNT 3, The Radical Rescue, um, just because I think like the gameplay mechanics themselves are solid enough. I mean, it's enjoyable. It's just the maze of like trying to navigate the, those levels was brutal. Uh, I've been kind of drugged down the game and ultimately led to me putting it down, but it might be something I'd pick up from time to time. And um, I w would just burn every single little lemming. Um, I don't have the patience to sit there and waste my time watching them just mosey on through those levels. Like, that was just agonizing. I just... N no way. Like, it, it, I was so excited that Lemmings was picked for this, because I used to just love Lemmings, but I was a stupid kid, because I <laughs> sat there and wasted hours watching these blue little shits just take their sweet-ass time getting to the end of those levels so I could move on. I just, no way. Like, torch it. <laughs> torch them all if I could, but I'm burning Lemmings. You can self-destruct them. Yeah. That... Yeah, that the one highlight I can murder them all on with a genocide button. It's good. <laughs> to be fair, if we could, I would burn them all. Yeah, I would too. I think I'm there with you too. Yeah. <sighs> what a lot of crap for Byron Burn. 